before I move my sign. Yay, we're recording. Okay, so this is what we're making, guys. We're making mittens, and I made them two different ways for you, just to give you an idea. Okay, this one's a little bit fancier. This one's a little bit plainer, and I've got the little bobble things that are flying all over the place okay but equally beautiful and equally easy to make so we're going to get started by actually doing the misting that we need to do tonight uh, just because some of it needs to dry and I'm going to take out my spraying box okay and I'm just going to put it to the side for now the first thing I want to spray is my flowers and I'm using Prima flowers and these are Koi Helene okay hope you can see that. Kind of got the glare. Just take them out of the bag, right? Alright, so this is what they look like. So I'm going to take the two largest ones. You can see that I've already used the other ones. Okay. And I'm going to spray those. And I'm just going to put that aside. Put them in here. And I'm using uh, Prima Color Bloom Worn Leather. Okay, because I want the color to be darker. I'll get away from the camera to shape. Alright, I just want the color more on the brownish tones, which this will definitely do. Okay, that's all the spraying we're doing with that. So I'm going to put this aside because I need to do some more spraying, and this time it's going to be in red. Okay, oh, hang on a second. That may be one of the ladies. It is. Hey. Hello. Yes, I am. What do you mean? You... I'm on. You don't see me at all? Shows that I'm live. And I'm recording. Okay, <laughs> no problem. As long as it's working, that's all that matters, right? <laughs> okay, bye. <laughs> okay, sorry about that, guys. Someone was having an issue seeing me, and they thought it was me that was... Whatever, it doesn't matter. Okay, the next thing that I'm going to use is Petaloo Fancy Trims, and this is Burlap Trims in Cream. Now, this actually came in... I want to say it was the main kit, the December main kit. All right, and I'm, I already had a package of this, and so I love this stuff so much, I'm using it in my project. So the first piece that we're going to use is the burlap. Now, I'm just going to cut a piece. Let me get my good scissors here. Eh, roughly 12 inches long, and the only reason I'm doing it that length is because I need extra pieces of this, and you'll see when we get to there, okay? So... Again, I'm spraying and I'm using the Prima Color Bloom. This is Carmine Red. It's an absolutely gorgeous red. And I'm going to shake away from the camera because I know it's loud. And I am going to spray both sides. I'm not being thorough in my spraying, but I do want mist on both sides. Okay? That's all the spraying that we're doing. That's the wet stuff. So I'm going to put this aside to dry. Now this will take a little while to dry, and I already have a piece um, done. Okay, so moving on, let me get that out of the way. We're going to move on to the main part of the mitten, and what I'm using is felt, and this is just regular craft store acrylic felt. It's nothing special about it. I used an ivory color, okay, and I'm going to stencil on it with, this is a crafter's workshop stencil, and I believe it's an older one. It's called Snowflake. And I'm just going to lay it down. As you can see, it fits pretty well on my paper. Okay, and of course, I forgot to um, pull out a palette, so we'll just use scrap paper. I'm using gesso tonight. Okay. Um, there's no really no reason why specifically I decided to use gesso. It was on the table when I started testing out this project. And so I picked it up and I liked how it looked. So that's what I'm using. 
Okay? So all you're going to do is pounce. Now, every other time that we tell you to pounce with paint or with gesso on your project, we always tell you to dab off your spouncer or your brush or whatever you're using because the um, paint or gesso will run underneath the stencil. Well, this is one of those times where you can have a lot on your on your spouncer and not worry about it because it won't seep. The, the felt just sucks it in. So it's not going to seep underneath your stencil. Okay, so basically what you're going to do is you're going to cover the whole piece. Okay, and I know you all know how to do this, so I'm just going to finish this right here what gesso I have on my paper and show you what it looks like. Alright, this is a similar um, project to um, the stockings that I did and I want to say that was a year ago. I think that's when it was. Okay, so you just want to make sure that you get good coverage. Now I will tell you if you um, just putting that on the floor if you wanted to add some glitter this would be a good time to do that okay so you can see how beautiful your snowflakes turn out and it doesn't have to be snowflakes it could be anything that you want alright so I'm gonna put this aside because this is wet and I already have one that's already done of course you don't have to use glitter I chose not to because the last time I played with glitter um, it didn't go very well and I ended up wearing it and so did my room for a week uh, and after several vacuuming attempts as well so this is your piece okay you only need to do one if you really wanted to do the back side then obviously you do two pieces okay but I didn't feel it necessary to do the back side of the piece so um, so I do have a pattern and I didn't get it uploaded today but I will get it uploaded for you this is my pattern um, in the flying unicorn form under the template section I will add it tomorrow alright uh, I have a small mitten on there and the reason that I have that is because you have leftovers I mean you could put two but it's a really tight fit and you won't be able to cut the way I'm cutting now or I will be cutting alright but you can get a small piece or a small mitten out of it which I did and I'll show you that I'll try and remember to show you that once we're done with this project and I'm trying to go fast here now you really wanna you really do want to start down here pinning it just seems like felt has a way of wanting to move you know when it's against each other it wants to slide alright so the next step is cutting so I'm going to use my pinking shears you know zigzaggy things and I'm going to cut around I'm not cutting on the paper I'm just cutting along the edge and I'm going to start here just because I need to get rid of this piece here and I'm cutting through both layers now my pinking shears are not the sharpest ones they've been heavily used okay so here's your leftovers you can make the small mittens with so don't throw that away okay so I'm just following the outside edge of my paper and I get to here and then not see there I didn't cut that you can cut through both pieces and I'm gonna just come back to right around the thumb so I'm cutting about a quarter of an inch roughly and it's not perfect because in some areas it's not a quarter of an inch okay so I will cut up in here and you can see my shears are not in very good shape okay so there we go that's our piece okay let me get my pins out 
and if you need to, like I have a little pieces hanging off the edge, and I can go back and trim that in a little bit. But the first thing I'm going to do is glue. It's much easier to trim it once it's been glued down. Okay, so again, because this fabric seems to move once it's against each other, I'm going to glue starting at the bottom. And again, I'm going about a quarter of an inch away from the edge. Okay, and I'm going to glue all the way around except at the top. And I'm not being perfect about it. It doesn't matter. Um, I stuffed mine. Actually, mine are stuffed right now with tissue paper because I don't have any, I didn't have any um, batting, not batting, fl fluffing, stuffing. That's what it is. The stuffy stuff you put inside pillows. But I did think that I would go ahead and use, i um, just going to fix this thumb. I was thinking I have some pine cones, <coughs> excuse me, that smell, that are scented. <coughs> and I was thinking that would be a good thing. Excuse me just a minute. <coughs> okay. <coughs> okay, I think I'm okay. <coughs> All right, so I have, <coughs> excuse me, both my mittens done. And we're going <clears> to, <throat> excuse me, we're going to do this one first, all right? So I'll put this one aside. <clears throat> all right, the first thing I want to use is, <clears throat> wow, that was a coughing fit. This is flying unicorn lace. And <clears throat> I'm going <clears> to, <throat> excuse me, glue it around the edge up at the top. And I'm going to use my fabric tack again. And I did do both sides. I just felt that it looked better if you did both sides with lace. Um, <clears throat> not everything else needs to be on both sides. Okay, so we're going to trim that off. Okay. And we're done with that. <coughs> Whoa, excuse me. Wow. Okay, next thing. I have some ribbon. <clears throat> and I actually decided to go with fairly traditional colors. And I really love how it turned out. And I think it's because of the brown. I really love the brown added in. I guess because it gives a rustic look. And I really like that. So... <clears throat> Maybe that's why I like the traditional colors better this way. I don't know. But I am going to put another line of glue. And this time, <clears throat> I'm actually going to use my glue gun. Just because I don't want to have to sit here and hold it. And all I've done is I'm not really ruffling, but I'm kind of sort of pleating my ribbon. Okay, just to get it started. About like that. All right. And I'm just going to put a line of glue roughly right here. Just a little line just to get started. Okay. Now I've undone it. Okay. And now I'm going to go ahead and continue ruffling. And I want my line to be crooked. Okay. I don't want it to be straight. 
and I don't have glue underneath where I'm holding right now so I'm just gonna lift it up and put a little bit of glue underneath and then push it back down oh that's a little warm and it's not a perfect pleat and I'm okay with that and you can see that already okay and one more and I didn't do the back side um, once again you can if you wanted to this is by the way this is dollar store ribbon um, it was actually the inspiration for the piece and I'm just going to trim the edges of the ribbon whoops and I'm tucking I'm leaving the wire in I'm just tucking that end under so no one gets pinched you know or poked by the wire okay how's that okay is that pretty clear good I hope so <laughs> okay next step is we're going to use again we're going to go back to the um, petaloo trims and I'm going to use and I hope I have enough both the beige with twine and the beige and white braided twine okay I'm going to use them together <clears throat> okay they're like twisted in opposite directions <clears throat> and along with that I'm throwing in some embroidery floss and I want to say this is champagne gold okay it's not silver and it's not gold alright does that make sense okay so I want to leave myself an end and <clears throat> this is actually doing this backwards but that's okay I need about that much okay so I want to wrap so I want to hold this end here and I'm going to wrap around so basically I'm going to put a little dot of glue right here just to hold that in place and I'm going to use a pin to push it down because I don't want it to move okay and I'm going to put another one at the other side you could glue it all the way down if you wanted to um, I don't th really think it's that necessary it'll stay it's fabric fabric and hot glue you'll never get it apart okay and then okay let's see if I can actually do this the right way I'm actually going to twist these so that my embroidery floss is um, twist it around both pieces and now I'm going to go ahead and bring this piece back okay and I'm just going to make a knot and for now it's going to be a loose knot because I want to put some glue underneath it right there and that's what's going to hold my knot in place okay and then I'm just gonna bring this down now you're not gonna see this a whole lot I ended up cutting my pieces a little too short but maybe if I do it right this time around it will be um, it'll show more okay alright so now we need to check and see how our flowers are doing because we're moving on to flowers and they're pretty much dry. I'm going to have to hit them with the heat gun a little bit. <clears throat> okay. And that's 
that's it for that. All right, so put that one aside for the next one. All right, and I'm also using, where's my other flowers? Where's my white flowers? Oh no, where's my white flowers? Okay, I have no idea where my white flowers went to, guys. Hang on this second. Okay, well, I'm going to have to improvise because I have no idea where the heck I put them because they're not in my pile. These little white flowers. I have no idea where they are. So I'm going to improvise. I'm going to use the Petaloo, the jeweled flowers in ivory. And I know it's the other ones that are on the special, but I don't know what I did with them. So they're around somewhere. I just don't know where, but they're not in my pile. Okay. So, ah, I found them. Yay. Turn the package around. You might find things, right? So these are the Petaloo DIYs. And they're burlap butterflies and blossoms in ivory. Okay. Oh, I'm glad I found them. All right. So I need one of these. Okay. I'm not using the butterflies today. We'll leave that aside. I'm also using from the Botanica collection at Petaloo the velvet hydrangea pick in red. All right. So I need that out. I'll move that aside. And I will also be using from the Prima Flowers the uh, Victorian Christmas Poinsettia Kiss. And I'm just cutting this apart, basically, is what I'm going to do. Okay. All right. So now we can go ahead and start putting things in place. I'm going to take this apart, um, mostly because I am. Uh, the way I'm adding the flowers okay so I want my white one basically right here all right and I want my big one right here and I do need a piece of cardboard just to give it a little bit of lift so let me cut that with my Timmy scissors not my fabric scissors and I may need more than one piece but we'll see how it goes It just depends on where it falls on the mitten. You may need it. You may not need it. Okay. And then I'm going to go ahead and add this one here. So it's basically like this. All right. So let me go ahead. I'm not going to take the stem off of it. You can if you want to. All right, and then this one, let's see. No, it's going to need another piece. I have felt fluff everywhere. Okay. And then this one's going to go right about here. And I did kind of mush it up a little bit. All right. Now I will probably have to cut this a little bit. Let's see here. Let's see. Where's the other one? I want to see how it's going to fit before I go cutting anything. Yep. I do need to cut a little bit. All right. So this one's going to go right about there. So let's go ahead and get some glue on that. And I didn't put the glue on the flower. I put the glue on the stem. All right. And the reason for that is so that once it's dry, I can actually fluff the flower up. <clears throat> and this one's going to go right about there okay and then I did take um, 
the leaves as well. I love these. These are so gorgeous. These velvet flowers. I think when they first came out, I bought them in just about every color. Alright, and of course I'm going to do my little mushing the flower thing, which is, whoops, pull up on the top. Okay, and I'm just going to overlap these a little bit. Just like that. And then I'm going to show you something I discovered that I've been playing with and hoping at some point in time to do a video on. Alright, once we get this done. Alright, so now I want to go ahead and I need <clears throat> one longer piece of these little um, stems. If I can cut it. And then I need one, one more. I need two pieces is what I need. All right. And my glue is like squirted all over the place. That's going to go right there. And then this one, like I'm going to save that one for the other mitten. I'm going to take the big one here for the bottom. Okay. As you can see, I've used it all up. I've done good with the traditional colors. Ooh, I'm very proud of myself, actually. All right, so that's going to go there. And taking both of the little baubles, and I'm just going to twist them together. Right about like that. Um, not so much at the top, but at the bottom. And I will cut this. All right, and I'm going to kind of make a not quite an L shape, but just a little bit of a curve so that it'll stand up away from the fabric. And I'm going to put that right underneath there. Now, when I was at the dollar store, I no, this was at Michael's. I did buy some of these baubles like everybody else <laughs> has bought. Okay. And I was so disappointed because I could only find a couple of them in this color. And I absolutely love this color. It's uh, a creamy color. Okay. So I'm going to go ahead and put one of these. You can see once you've got your, your fabric painted, this is a really easy, fast project. All right. So I'm just going to tuck them under here and there. Okay, and one more for that. And then we're going to move on to the special thing I've been playing with. I'm going to show you an easy peasy way to play with foil. For those of you who are into foiling these days. Okay, now is that easy or what? I am going to trim this a little bit. Just a little bit. Just to get rid of the ends that aren't so pretty. And I am letting the metallic thread come apart. I actually like the look of that. Alright, so let's put that aside. That was the Victorian Christmas flowers. And I have a piece of blue fluff, and I don't know where that came from. Okay. Moving on. I have some. These are from Darice. These are rusted stars. They're mini stars is what they are. And they're an inch. An inch long. Big. Wide. Whatever. <laughs> okay. I have five of them. And... I think I used, I only used three. So, okay. So we'll put those aside for now. All right. Easy peasy way. Wait. There's something else I have to show you first. I need a piece of paper. We're going to work on this. Because we're, we have two things to do. Okay. Where are my, there they are. 
Okay, I'm going to do it all at the same time, but this is for the other mitten. These are flying unicorn adornments, and I'm using the little deer from the Yuletide um, collection. Okay, I'll put that aside, and I'm going to ink it up with alcohol ink. This is rust. Um, yeah, this is fast. The alcohol ink dries really quickly. You don't need that much of it. And I'm just going to pounce it on there. If the color you end up using is too dark, um, you can use blending solution to remove it. Or you can um, use alcohol. That will take care of it too. Okay, so we're actually done with that. And now we can move on to the part that I wanted you to see. And I'm going to take this off of the dark color because I think that's too dark. Okay. Now you'll see it more on the stars than you will on the um, deer. But I'm using, um, this is Heidi Swap. It's called Gold Reactive Foil. It comes in many different colors. I picked up the gold and, and the silver. You only need a little piece. And when I say little, um, I mean little. This is going to be too much. But I'm just going to cut it across. Okay? And I'm also going to do it on something else. Alright. So, like I said, I was playing. And I started playing with... I'm like way out of camera here. This is just a regular glue stick, okay? It's scotch, but I think you could probably get away with anything. All right, so you can see that the glue sticks out the top. If you turn it, it'll come out some more. I'm just going to take the edge, and I'm just going to barely touch the, um, the raised areas of my stars. And I'm not going to necessarily hit every spot because again I don't want it to be perfect okay and I'm gonna do it on his antlers as well okay now what you don't want when you're working with this is globs okay so if you have any globs take it away now since I said I was going to do something else for the other mitten I'm using one of the archival cast this is Prima um, this particular one is flaming hearts EXI Votos. Okay, uh, I don't know. It's the one with the three hearts, okay? And I already used the other heart and something else. I'm going to do the same thing on here, and you're going to see it even more on here. So I'm just, on this one, I don't have to do the edge because it's not as small. I can just go flat on. All right, now I didn't do this on the other mitten because I totally forgot about it. But it was in the plans to be done. All right. So once you've done that, after a few seconds, your glue becomes tacky. Okay. Just put your foil pretty side up on top. Okay. And look what happens. Can you see that? Isn't that cool? And I didn't need a machine to do it. Isn't that awesome? <laughs> I love finding new ways of using things. Mm. And you can see on this one, I hardly added any. And I'm just pushing it down with my fingers. That's all I'm doing. All right. I'm not being super perfect with it. And I didn't put glue everywhere. So it's not going to show everywhere. All right. Now it's going to be harder to see on the deer. But it is, can you see it? Can I see it? I can see it. I don't know if you can see it, but I can see it. Okay. It's harder because I already have the rust on there. Where you're really going to see it is on here. All right. Look at that. Now, one thing I will tell you, though, is because you're working with the glue, it's not necessarily going to want to stick to it all the time. Well, I mean, it will stick to it, but it may not stick as well to all areas of glue. I mean, your glue has to be tacky, and if you don't push enough. So you could wind up with little bits of 
stray glue on your piece, just use a baby wipe. It'll come right off. And you can see I'm just reusing in the same spots over and over again. All right. I'm going to push a little bit harder here. And you can tell I didn't put a lot of glue on. One more right here, and we're going to call it done. Okay, so can you see that? Can you see the gold? I hope you can see it. All right, so this one is for the other piece. So we're going to set that aside. All right, and there's still plenty of gold on here. I don't know if you can see that, but there's still plenty of gold. So now I want to tuck in my stars. I do want to glue those, and I did use... I made it easy on myself and I used foam dots because I didn't want to have to cut cardboard that small. I'm just because they're the stars are raised, of course you've got the indentation, so the little um, foam dots are perfect for in there. Okay. So what I've done here, and this is gonna work out a little different because this mitten is not exactly like the other one. All right. I'm going to use some hot glue right over the foam. Okay. Oh, that's hot right on the table. I'm going to put one right there. Oof. And I'm going to add some more glue. I'm going to add this one down here right underneath, sort of underneath the flower and push it in place and it will stay there believe it or not okay now on the other one my fabric or my ribbon was kind of like that so I'm just going to move it into place so I can make it do what I want it to do okay I didn't bring out any of the stuffing so you're not going to see this one stuffed all right but this is what it looks like my camera is like way off is that better that's better okay isn't that pretty all right so one more thing to do now if i'd really thought ahead of time and i didn't because i cut my um pieces ahead of time i'm using this is real leather that Alda has in the store. She has it in the black and this I think is I don't know if it's called rust or brown. I can't remember. Alright, but I had a big length of it and after I was done I thought, oh I should have attached them together like, you know, little children's mittens, how you put a string on them. Anyways, I didn't think of that. I'd already cut my pieces. So basically what I'm going to do is I'm just going to put a knot in it at the end and then I'm going to glue that inside. Now, if you wanted them attached together, don't cut your pieces first. <laughs> okay, don't do like I did, do as I say. So I am actually gonna pull apart a little bit of my glue here because I do want that glued on the side as close as I can. And I could have done that ahead of time, but I didn't. All right, I'm just gonna put a little bit more glue right on top of my knot so the two pieces glue together. And my computer's going into sleep now. Okay. So I hope you see that. Isn't that quick and easy? I mean, how easy is that? And how awesome is that little trick with the gold foil? All right. So let's move on and finish the second one. So our piece that we sprayed, and mine is still wet, so I'm not going to use this one. I already have another one. Okay. And what I did is I cut it in half. So let me move that aside. So here's my piece right here. This is my half. All right. And I pulled out pulled out some of the threads. Like two or three. Of course, you can see my cutting wasn't straight and that's why it's not wanting to come apart. But it will come apart. Alright, just so it's somewhat even on both sides. And 
don't throw these away. I need the big ones. All right, and then I'm just going to mush it. I want to kind of soften up the fibers. I mean, burlap is pretty stiff to begin with. And adding the mist on top of it just makes it that much stiffer. Okay? All right, so just a little bit. All right, so I'm going to take my other mitten. And... I'm going to glue that on, but first I need to glue on some lace. And let's see, I have a small piece here, I don't know. This is um, this is called spe Special Occasion Lace. And it's it double-sided, well, double-sided, you know, it's on, finished on both sides with the pearls in between. And I'm just going to glue that right there. So I'm going to go ahead and use my hot glue. Um, I probably shouldn't, but I will. And I say shouldn't because I know what I'm like with a glue gun. Okay, and trim the edge. And again, if you wanted to, you can do the back side. Um, did I on the other one? Yes, I did. So I guess we'll do both sides. I knew I did it with the other lace. but So let's go ahead and put a line of glue on this side. I see Maggie was on social stream. Hi, Maggie. Thank you for coming out to see the show tonight. Thank you, all of you for coming out to see the show tonight. Really appreciate you doing that. All right, just trimming. And this one is, again, easy, but just gives you a different option. I think they'd be really cute, the two of them together, tied with the string. And I'll show you an example of that with the small ones that I made. Okay, so again, we're going to glue, and I'm leaving my burlap curled up like that. That's exactly the look I want. So I'm going to go ahead and run another line of glue all the way to the end. This time I'm not doing the back side, and I am going to use my scissors to push it down because if ever hot glued burlap, you know it will go through. All right. And then I'm going to run another one just below it. And I'm going to mush it a little bit more. Okay. Don't use fingers. Use scissors. Okay. And what happens is you can actually pull up those threads like this All right, and trim away and trim away and that's that so I started with a longer length so I could have this and I'll show you what to do with that in a minute alright okay going back to our um, petaloo um, burlap trim in cream and I hope I have enough I have a small piece left of the um, just a beige twine and I'm just gonna run a piece in the middle like that alright so once again hot glue and pushing down with my scissors And one more time right here. Just like that. Okay. And trim the ends. All right, now I'm going to get rid of the glue webs as much as I can. <coughs> Excuse me. So now, the only thing that's left to do is to go ahead and decorate, just like we did the other one. Similar. All right, so we're back to the uh, DIY Petaloo 
the burlap butterflies and blossoms in ivory okay so I'm gonna put them basically in the same spot okay and our large flower which I will need some cardboard again to prop it up let's cut from this side two pieces should do it all right now I didn't use the metallic thread on this one um, I just didn't feel that it needed it because of all the rest of the bling it's going to have. And go ahead and put my cardboard on my flower first and arrange as we go. Alright, so that's going there. And then I threw my package over here. I need the last Prima flower from this package. There was six in total. And I left this one plain. All right. This is the uh, Koi Helene. All right. So that's going to go. I'm going to put this one like, th I'm going to do like this. All right. So I'm going to go ahead and add some glue. Oof. Right there. Okay, and before I put this one down, I'm going to grab my red threads, okay, and I'm going to make a bow. I'm just going to make a bow. That's it. And it doesn't have to be perfect. All right. It won't be perfect. I guarantee that. And I'm going to go ahead and place it. I'm going to do this way. Right here. Right about there. Let's get some glue. Let's get some glue on there. Should have stuck with the hot glue. But I keep burning myself, so. And then I'm going to go ahead and put my large flower right on top. Now we'll trim this because this is a little long. Okay. Now I did use some leaves on that one. I think I used the leaves from the from the uh, berry pick. I'm pretty sure I did. So I need three of those. I threw it in the box without thinking. That pretty much takes care of that one. Okay, and I'm going to mush my flower again, or my leaf. Okay, and add some glue. Does your glue do that? Does it bubble up like that? Or is it just me? Is it because I'm squeezing too hard, wanting too much to come out too fast? Don't know. When I say I have glue issues, I mean it. Okay, and then this last one is going to go roughly here, and I might have to move it. So this is where our heart, and I'm not even going to bother taking off the hanger, our heart is going to go in here. Now I, I realize that this one is quite big in comparison and I will take off the wire because it's um, in the way. So I'm just going to pull it out. Okay, That's the piece that's in there. Garbage that. Alright, let's get our heart on there. Now because this heart is so big it's going to take up a little bit more room. I probably should have put that down before I put the flowers down. But we will adjust as we go along, right? That's what we do. That's what you have to do when you're a crafter. Right? We adjust as we go along. I'm going to move this a little bit more that way. There we go. That's a little bit better. And then for the deer, again, I'm using another foam dot. And this time I'm not going to use the hot glue. I'm going to use this, my Fabri-Tac, which I just wiped the edge of because it's all over the place. And I'm just going to dab it. The, this will hold it better than the, uh, the hot glue. Especially if you're storing, you know, where it's not like room temperature. 
in your attic or in your basement or whatever, hot glue has a tendency to come undone. All right. So now I need a little bit of this red stuff, and I think I might have used too much of it on the other piece. So we're going to improvise on that. We're only going to put it on the bottom. Okay, right about like that, and I'm going to pull out some of the berries, and again, I have to improvise because I only have two, and I use three. But that's okay. Alright, so since I don't have anything else at the top, I'm going to put one, I think I'm going to put both of them up here. I want them both? No, I don't want them both up there. Tell me, am I the only one that talks to herself when she's working on crafty stuff? Do you guys talk to yourselves? I think I do it too much. Okay, and we need the little piece of leather. I love this stuff. If you could feel this stuff, it is so soft. Love to have a jacket made of it. Okay, and of course we're going to put in our knot. And get some glue right in here. Put the knot on the glue. Put a little bit of glue on the knot. And close it shut. And there you have it. That's it. That's what this one is. Pretty cool, huh? Alright, so I said I was going to show you what I did with the small pieces. And I will. I made small mittens using the exact same products, okay, the same lace, the same um, burlap trim, which I scrunched it together on that one, and then I just ran all my, the rest of the trims from the package along with the red stuff, and um, just kind of made a knot, and then glued my star over top. That's it. How easy peasy is that, guys? Right? All right. Let me turn up the camera and bear with me because, you know, it's the camera. And All right. And I don't want to go too high because then you'll have the light right in behind me. So I hope you enjoyed the project tonight. It was a lot of fun to make. I really enjoyed it. And I really actually enjoyed working with traditional colors. So for all those of you who... Um, when I asked the question before, if you would like to see traditional colors, thank you for saying that because you kind of pushed me on my comfort zone, but it worked out really good for me. So once again, thank you all for stopping by. Don't forget announcements. Um, Ustream special tab, 10% off on the items that Alda has in the store. If you have some foil, try the trick I just showed you. And don't forget that this is our last Ustream show this year. We will be back January 6th. Actually, Song will be back on January 6th at 9 o'clock. We'll just start right back up into um, our shows again, our weekly shows. And if I don't see you or get to talk to you before the next year, Merry Christmas. Happy New Year. Bye, guys. Thank you very much.